Hello everyone, this is Ephraim with the Arrow team. Today we're going to go over the build for the Season 4 full speed spec. I'm going to outline the parts that came with your kit and we will do a step by step tutorial on how to build and put together the drone. So what you'll need for the build, tools wise, will be some pliers or wire strippers. 1.5 and 2 millimeter hex heads for the screws, tweezers, and a soldering iron. Adjustable temperature is ideal. Uh, the soldering temperature is going to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure that you're adjusted when it's time to solder. parts that come with your kit. You have your Armaton Tadpole HD frame, your four pyro drone motors, your Foxier micro camera, your Beta FPV flight controller, Panda RC video transmitter, and your FreeSky radio receiver. So to get started, let's go ahead and unload our frame and take stock of all the parts that come with it. So again, this is the Armaton Tadpole frame. Comes with all of the screws and hardware that you need for the build. And it also comes with a schematic. So I suggest studying the schematic first to get a feel for the type of types of parts needed for the build and where things go. After unpacking all of your hardware and parts for your frame, lay them all out and again be sure to reference the uh, schematics and instruction manual which we will be referencing. In terms of parts, this is a general layout of the camera mounts in the front and the antenna mounts in the back. This is the bottom frame, this is the front, this is the back. This is the top plate along with the battery pad and the hardware packs according to the instructions will work our way from the left pack all the way down to the right. The first seem to be landing gear as well as a brace for the camera. The second pocket is going to be our hardware screws that we can use to connect all of the, the hardware to the frame and everything else just sort of follows um, along with the stack for the flight controller. Okay, so the first step is to take one of these braces and we'll pair it with the antenna mounts. So because we're using an analog camera, it's suggested that we use the shorter version. And this is for an HD camera, which uh, we won't be able to use, so we could set that aside. So, take the portion with the protrusion uh, facing forward, take one of the braces here, and we're going to insert it right behind in this notch. Okay, so with the notch facing up, see that notch there? And with this notch here, Insert it until it seats properly. So we're going to do it for both sides. Okay, so there's one. And we'll do the other one. So again, fit this notch into the corresponding notch in this piece. Make sure it's nice and straight. And go ahead and push it in. Okay. 
and that is that rear piece. Now we're going to take four of our screws. These are from the second pack. These are the M2 six millimeter screws. And we are going to attach the camera brace in the front and the antenna braces in the back from the bottom of the plate. So either way, top or bottom, the plate um, doesn't really matter. So you could just start from the bottom. Take one of your screws and let's start on one. So how the camera plate is supposed to look is that the short end is at the top. So for example, if you're looking at it from the side, it's supposed to look like this. And there's going to be two of them in the front. So we can go ahead and fasten one. Use your 1.5 millimeter driver. And just to just be sure to align the hole. The camera brace is threaded, so it will grip it. And once it's aligned, just go ahead and drive it. Okay. Just tighten it, but don't over tighten. So you'll see that the camera plate is flush with the bottom here. And it also has a recess inside of the frame. So we have one in, let's go ahead and put another. And make sure that it's nice and straight. And go ahead and tighten it. And this is the front camera brace. So, again, this is supposed to be on the top, and the wider part is on the bottom. What this is going to do is this is going to hold your FPV camera. Okay, so the other two screws will be used to mount the rear antenna holder. So go ahead and place them on these two holes over here. And the assembly that we had done earlier, they're both together. So now we can go ahead and try and, and screw them on as well. So you could try and align one first, then the other. So again, just line it up. Do what you can. It is a little flexible with the mount in the middle. And once you get a bite, start to straighten it out. And as you tighten, I'll show you shortly, but the edge of that mount is supposed to go over the rear of the frame. So you kind of see that there. Once we tighten it down, it's going to be flush. This side is flush, this side is almost there, so I'm just going to give it a little more. Okay, so just a little close view, you kind of see that this piece is down and flush with the back. And again, this is the antenna holder. So that is the front camera mounts and the antenna mounts in the back. When we get to the rest of the assembly, um, these are the structures that will also hold up the top plate. So just gonna give you a little preview of that right now. And it's gonna look just like that.
Now we're going to take a look at mocking up the flight controller to the frame. So this is part of the assembly of the frame where we are going to put up the structural items that will hold up the flight controller. I brought the flight controller out as well so that we can also take a look visually of how it's going to be placed in the frame. From the hardware pack, make sure you get four of the 18 millimeter M2 screws four of the nylon washers and four of the lock nuts. So the lock nuts and the washers came from the second pack and the 18 millimeter screws came from the fourth pack. So how the flight controller is going to lay on the on the frame is that um, the flight controller does have a direction so if you can see it there is a white arrow here on the edge and that means that this is the front of the of the craft so it's actually going to go diagonally just like this So this lines up to the four holes here, you can see them, one, two, three, and four. There are other holes, but there are, those are also for different size flight controllers and configurations. But for this build, we'll be doing the diagonal. So I can start by taking one of the screws and let's place it in the front hole. So in this notch over here. And what you'll want to do is then layer it with one of the nylon screws, or nylon washers, excuse me. And then you'll want to use one of the nylon locks, nuts. Hold one in with pliers keep it secure and on the other end use your driver to drive all the way through the nut and you're going to do this for all four of them After putting on one of the last screws, you can kind of see now that we have the structure. This is going to be the structure that holds the flank controller. So take your flight controller out of the box and make sure that you put these white washers on. Or these are uh, jello pads to help um, dampen any vibrations in your flight controller. So it's best to put these on using tweezers and just pinch it a bit and kind of put it in a hole and just gently slide it in, pinch it each time so that it goes inside, but just be careful not to pierce it because this needs to be able to hold up your flight controller. Okay, and when it's through, just make sure that it's nice and snug. So this is the flight controller with the jello pads. So now we're just going to do a dry mock-up. We're going to line up the four holes, four corners of the flight controller with the screws that we had just put on. And if they don't line up at first, um, the holes are slotted so you can actually adjust them a little bit. So don't over tighten the, the screws just yet. But based on how we have it here, looks like the placement is good. So when they're fully aligned, you can just slide it down and again, double check for clearance. So again, from the bottom, four screws are set. And usually I would put an additional nut on the bottom so that 
Uh, there's clearance, but this looks to be pretty adequate. So you can see there, there's pretty good clearance from the bottom. The only other item that's going to go on top of the flight controller is the VTX, which we can mock up after uh, we've, we've assembled everything else. But in terms of putting together the full frame, uh, the only items left over are really the, the camera into the brace and the top plate. So as we showed earlier, just going to mock it up real quick. And this is somewhat of an assembled frame. The rest of the parts that's going to go on this to complete the build are the actual parts themselves. So the motors, VTX, camera, and your antenna placement. Everything else is integrated onto the flight controller, which we will be soldering the items to. So before we can get started with uh, the rest of the assembly of the parts, let's just prep our flight controller. So what we're going to do is the pigtail comes with the flight controller not soldered on. So um, we'll need to solder that on first so that we can eventually supply power to the board. So red is positive and black is negative or ground. Uh, corresponding to the board again with the board facing front the two holes in the back here are for power and if you look closer you can see the plus sign which is for the positive on the left and the negative sign for the black wire is on the right so if you were to solder these Usually I suggest going from the bottom, so the bottom of the flight controller, you can just pass both of them there. And there's just enough lead to expose the wire to the pad. So uh, if it's a little short, you can cut a little off the wire so that um, they protrude a bit to the, um, the power holes. So these I might have to cut a little bit in order to solder them and have a good connection because uh, they, they barely come through. So yeah, right now they're flush, but I usually want a little more so that the wire would be secure. If you need to remove the jelly pad for now so that you can avoid burning it with a soldering iron, feel free. Um, I will do the same. And I have stripped off a bit of the sleeve of the XT connector or the power connector. Uh, that way I'll have a little more exposure of the wire when I put it inside. So you can kind of see there, protrudes a little bit. And once that's soldered, uh, will be a solid connection. So I'm just going to go ahead and set two of the screws here. So I can hold it still. And just position it in a way where... The wire is as straight as it could be. Once you have the position that you're looking for, you're going to take your solder and your soldering iron. So again, set your temperature to 350 degrees. Let it uh, get to that temperature. Once I'm up to temperature, I'll just tin my soldering iron a bit. Tinning is the act of coating your, whether the item that you're about to, to solder, the pad or the wire, and the soldering iron itself so that they have a thermal connection. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and again lightly tin your soldering iron, apply some solder and just let it flow. Doesn't require too much. What you want to do is be able to cover the exposed wire onto the, the gold pen so that you have a solid connection. And it'll end up just looking like a silver bubble. And with 
one already in. It's already easy to position, so again, go ahead, tin your soldering iron, and let some solder flow. Heat up the the wire as well as the pad. And once all the temperatures are aligned, um, allow a little more solder to flow through. And just make sure you have a, a nice even coat around the power pad. And once there, inspect your work. Just make sure that there are no exposed um, pieces of wire and make sure that it's fully coated and covering the, the pad. You inspect on the bottom as well, but they look pretty flush to me. I want to test too just by giving it a light tug and again making sure that you're evenly coated. So uh, we went ahead and pre-tinned our pads on the flight controller. Uh, we'll also supply the diagram for the flight controller and highlight which pads um, in detail need to be tinned uh, for the appropriate connection. But uh, just as a view right now, so we've done the power wires uh, earlier. So these are these two. Um, there are four ports for the motors. So this is one. This is two. Sorry. This is two. This is three and this is four. So this corresponds to the number of the motors. So on a drone, you can refer to a diagram in the documentation, but bottom right corner is motor number one, and that will be soldered to these pads here. Top right is motor number two, and that will be soldered to these three pads here. Motor number three is the bottom left And that is going to be soldered to these three pads here. And motor number four is top left, which is going to be soldered to these pads. Okay, so right now we're just mocking up the motors. And I'm doing the one back and one front for now. And this is to just give you an idea of the length of wire needed. Uh, the motors come with their full length wires, but you won't need the full length. You will uh, cut them out the size, cut them down to the size so that they'll uh, be a little more cleaner and save you on weight. So, um, in terms of the rear motor or the bottom right, again, we're, we're going to be soldering to these these three pads here. So usually, I would just eyeball it. So run it along the arm. Uh, if you want, you could put electric tape for now just to secure it in place. And usually I'll position it to where it'll need to go. So in terms of uh, the rear motor, motor number one, it will be aligned just like that. I estimate about eight centimeters. You just wanna make sure you have enough uh, slack to be able to tuck it down a little to the bottom of the frame and bring it up. Yeah, just about seven centimeters. So the same on the front. So the front is a little shorter because the arms are closer to the pads. So again, you could use electric tape to secure the wires so that it's easier to manage. And I usually would tuck it down a little to just signify that, you know, this is the, the wires making their way from the arm to the pads. And I'll use an eyeball, <clears throat> eyeball just about here on my left thumb. And that would be my cut point. So again, if I was to measure that, that's gonna look like roughly almost four centimeters. Um, one note about the screws, the motor screws. So they come with a whole different type of screws here. <clears throat> I 
I would suggest using the shortest screws because the frame isn't that thick. I don't suggest using the long screws. The long screws are actually for fastening the propellers. So again, use the shortest screws that you can and you would just um, use all four and the motor holes. Right now I'm just using two because I'm mocking them up. Now that all four motor wires have been cut to size, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start soldering them all on to their connections. So I prefer to have the motor off of the mount. Um, that way you have space to spread out your wires and strip and tin as you need. And then when you're ready to solder it, uh, you can either still leave the motor off and then after they're soldered on, mount it back in place. And these are going to be done one on one or one at a time. So I'm going to show you the, the first one. So because we cut the motors, the motor wires, uh, we'll need to strip them again so that we can expose the wire and tin it. So you'll get your wire stripper. And depending on the gauge, this is the, the smallest gauge. I'm going to go ahead and strip maybe about one or two millimeters. Just about there. And you can see that now the wire is exposed. So usually when you expose the wire, I would suggest twisting it a little. Just so that the individual strands don't get spread apart. So now with all of the wires exposed, we're going to want to tin them. So you're going to want to coat them with solder so that they can transfer the heat over and solder onto the pad easier. So just position them, get your soldering iron and your solder. And to tin the wire, again, bring your soldering iron up to temperature. So this is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're going to do is we're going to tin our soldering iron tip. Just get some solder on there, get it coated. And pretty much we're just going to run the bead of solder up the wire. Doesn't need that much. And it may be hard to see, but the solder is coating the wire. To the third one here. Again, just lightly touch it. And now all of the wires strands are sealed together after you had soldered them. So you kind of see they're fused in place. And these three will go to motor one pads. So we're going to solder them to these three over here. Okay. So they're going to coincide to these pads. Again, very small, but also be careful to not to make sure that the beads of solder on each pad don't touch each other. So if you need to use your tweezers, you can. Um, I personally like to use my tweezers too. That way I'm precise and where I'm soldering each wire. So in this case, I'm gonna bend it down just a little bit and lay it on the pad and just lightly touch it. Again, it's not gonna take much. So just apply a little heat and they'll fuse together. And just touch it. Okay. So it looks like all three of our wires are soldered onto their pads. Just gonna close up here. I uh, might want to redo a little bit of the third one on the left, but actually they all seem pretty solid. 
So um, now that they're soldered on, I can go ahead and mount the motor. So um, because we cut it to length, right, it's just a matter of arranging it and positioning it. So I'll go ahead and mount the motor. So take your motor screws. And let's do one. Just line it up with the pan or the hole of the motor. Okay. And again, we'll misalign it. And again, adjust the motor mount as you need. Don't tighten just yet. And once they're aligned, go ahead and screw it in. So even at this point, you don't want to have the motor mounts too tight just yet. I'm only using two screws for now. And here we go. So, because I did about seven and a half millimeter or seven and a half centimeters, I have some slack here so I can actually position my wires. And the way that I build, I tend to have a little more slack in the wires anyway, so that you can kind of tuck it like this. And that's one. So the same concept will go for, this is motor number one, this is motor number two, motor number three, and motor number four to their respective pens. So we had just completed soldering our motor wires to the flight controller. So as you can see, um, as we mentioned earlier, why I prefer a little slack is now we're able to route the wires and tuck them under the flight controller gap. And yeah, nice and clean. Now set your preference whether or not you want to um, tape the wires down using electrical tape. Um, I'll put a strip or two just to make sure that it doesn't move around, uh, usually in the middle of the arm and maybe even somewhere close here so that um, the connection doesn't move around much. But yeah, as you can see, even without any tape, uh, the motor wires are sitting pretty neatly. So motor one to motor pad one, motor two to motor pad two, motor pad three to three and motor pad four to four. So next up, we're going to set up our video system. So this is our VTX and this is our camera. So uh, the camera comes as a nano, so make sure that you use the included bracket because the bracket is what's going to fit into the mount here, okay? We'll be tuning to the farthest right, which is power, power in. Second to the right, which is ground, black wire. Third from the right is going to be the control for the VTX. And on the far left, video, yellow wire, video in. So the VTX does come with its own wires and we're going to connect these. And these will connect into this side over here. So again, check the documentation uh, that will include on how to wire it. And the camera can either be wired directly to the VTX or to the flight controller. So very similar to the VTX, the camera has a set of wires. So for the purposes of video, we'll be utilizing one of the harnesses. So this one comes with yellow, red, and black. So again, universally, yellow is for video, black is for ground, and red is for power. Okay, you can see here we soldered the wires to the VTX. So from far right, power in. Second to the right, ground, the middle is the RX, and far left is the video. Just like with the flight controller, these are very small pads, so be very careful and make sure that the pads don't touch each other, but that you have a secure connection. 
if you do have spare hardware in your in your pack, um, which you should, I suggest putting two nylon nuts on each of the standoffs. And what's going to happen is you can mock up your VTX like so onto the stack and have it pretty much aligned with the screws here of the flight controller. Just have to bend it a bit. So, assuming that you have the nuts between the flight controller and the VTX, the VTX will sit on top of those nuts. But uh, from here, you can just about eyeball the amount of wire you'll need. So, these will obviously be tucked under the VTX, uh, and you can determine what length you need to cut. So, um, I would just suggest giving yourself some slack. This is going to be tucked under the VTX and going to be soldered to these pads here, if you could see it. So I'm probably going to cut probably around here. And you can start to tin your wires and get them ready to be soldered. All right, with our VTX prepped, at the same time, we'll want to do the camera too. So uh, to get a good idea of the length of wire that's going to be needed, you're going to go ahead and mock up your camera. So again, make sure you're using the bracket so that you can fit the adapter on the side, so just line up your camera. And the camera does come with its own set of screws too. Use the longest ones. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the camera so that, or mock up the camera, so that we can mock up the wiring. Once you have your camera secured, I would suggest angling it to how you'll angle your camera when you actually fly. So in this case, about 35 degrees. That way, um, when you measure your wire, it'll be more accurate and it'll be the, the size that you want. Um, again, with any wiring and connection, you want to make sure you have just a little extra, just in case. So, looking at where the camera is going to be wired is going to be just about here. So, uh, to have a little extra, I would just actually go ahead and snip right at the edge of the connector. That's the most length that you'll get anyway. So just like with the VTX and other wires, just go ahead and um, use your wire stripper and expose the wire and tin them. And we can go ahead and get ready for soldering them together. Now that we have our camera wires tinned and our VTX wires tinned and ready as well, let's go ahead and solder them to the flight controller. So it's gonna be a little hard to see, so I would still refer to the wiring diagram and we'll illustrate it and be very clear which component gets soldered to which pad. Um, I'll try to zoom in and show which wire or which wire goes to which pad. So, as with other instances of the build, I would still be very careful because the pads are close and are very small. So use tweezers to position and um, after you solder it, inspect your work. Just make sure that they don't bridge or touch each other. So for the camera, um, it is going to be 
soldered on these three pads here. So uh, the red wire is going to go to this pad, black wire to the second pad from the bottom, and yellow wire is going to be on the third pad. Next is going to be the black or the ground wire. And lastly, yellow for video. Next, let's go ahead and solder on the VTX. So let's move these wires out of the way. So the VTX, let's start with the video. So the yellow wire will actually go right next to the, the yellow wire of the camera. So you can position your wires out of the way so that you can use the one that you're intending to use. Okay, make sure you have a solid connection. These two pads here are battery power. You can wire the red and black on the VTX either to these two pads or to the pads that connect to your batteries, either one. But just make sure that uh, you're connecting positive to positive and ground to ground. Okay, so in this case, um, positive is this pad for battery power this one so red goes here and black goes here so let's go ahead and do that right now okay um, lastly is going to be the control wire for smart audio can go to TX number six. So it's gonna be the second to the last pad down here. So the white wire from the VTX will go to this pad. Okay, again, inspect your work. Make sure that the solder and the pads, or solder and the wires are not touching each other. Now that the VTX is soldered on, um, you can go ahead and start to uh, tuck your wires. So what I usually do is I'll, I'll twist them a little bit. And what that does is causes them to, to sit and pile up a little bit. Then when you're ready, you can go ahead and seat your VTX aligned with your standoff screws. You want to keep the boards separate, so if you want to put a nylon nut in between the flight controller and the VTX, that's fine. Uh, one or two should give you enough clearance, uh, but pretty much wiring is complete for the video system. Now you can test this by powering on the flight controller with 
the VTX and the camera since they're all connected. And if you tune in to the channel, um, you should be able to see video. But you can test that later uh, when we get to the programming segment. Alright, so the last piece that we're going to wire onto the flight controller is going to be your radio receiver. This is the FreeSky RXSR. And you'll notice that I snipped off two of the wires. Uh, we'll only need three for this build. So the green wire, the black wire, and the red wire. Uh, these, uh, this is the full length. You can cut it uh, to the desired length that you want. Usually I would um, first mock up where this would go uh, because uh, these two wires are what receive the signal from your flight controller or from your your radio controller. So usually it'd be someplace where um, you could you could stick it to the top of your plate. So, for example, if I was to put the plate on, so um, usually I would stick this underneath the the back plate. So if this was under. For example, and you want to just get the video and turn it out of the way for now. So, for example, <clears throat> if it was mounted here, then your two radio antennas would go up. You can use zip ties to, to secure them or tape if you want. Uh, though it is a little risky back here because you have to factor the propellers also spinning. So what I would recommend alternatively is to mount it on the bottom. And because there are holes back here that you can see, uh, these holes you can use them to, to route the radio antennas to. So, again, if I was to do this, I would route the antennas through the holes. Then that would allow me to then mount my radio receiver um, close, closer to the bottom, like so. So you can reposition these antennas. There are glued a bit, but you can turn them slightly to get them to where you want. And if you're removing the, the power lead out of the way, then this would be a good place to put it. So again, you could stick it on the bottom. Then afterwards, uh, when you finish your build, you can route your antenna like so. Um, you could use a, a black straw. So long as they're set up sort of in a V configuration, that'll work. Or as long as they're they're spread out. That way um, you can get pretty good radio signal. So for this build, um, another alternate is if you have foam tape uh, you could stick it to the bottom of this and stick it on top of the VTX. Although I don't recommend it because the VTX will get hot and um, you don't want another component lying on this because eventually it's going to burn it. So once you've determined where you want to place your radio receiver, um, for this particular build I would suggest um, mounting it on the bottom and you can either pass the antennas through the holes in the, in the frame or you can actually also route it through these aluminum pieces here. So there's, there's a little nook on each side. So if I did one on one side and the other antenna on the opposite side That's also another possible place for you to, to mount. But just make sure that when you do that, they're clear of your propellers. 
So this, this could also work. Okay. So once you've determined your placement, you can go ahead and solder the three wires. Um, you can cut them down to size and they're gonna go to these three front pads here. And the red. And finally, the green wire. So this is the SBUS signal wire. Like I said, you, you can uh, shorten these wires if um, you want it a little more neat. Um, you can totally go back and redo these, uh, but for purposes of deciding where you want to mount, uh, we'll leave it for now. After you've completed the binding procedure, uh, which is in a documentation, uh, binding it to your radio, this is the bind button over here. Uh, then you can seal it up um, either with le liquid electrical tape, regular electric tape, or uh, the heat shrink that came with it. Then find a place where you want to secure it, um, paste it down, and it should be good to go. And uh, when you are ready to close it up, you can start to put the plate together. Okay, so it just snaps into place just like that. And I would use actually one more note. So if you want to secure your your VTX to the stack, uh, use some of the M2 nuts that came with the frame kit and you can use it to pretty much cap the top. So, just like how you used it to separate between the flight controller and the VTX, uh, you can also tighten it up over here. So you could do that for all three of the standoffs and that'll secure VTX in place. But if you are ready to finish up, go ahead and just start to put the plate snaps in place and use the the rest of the m6 screws from the kit so you're gonna use four of them and you can apply it to the corresponding holes in the frame on the top Two in the front and two in the back, like so. And you can start to secure them. Okay. So, for the most part, this is the completed assembly. Um, some of your kits might have come with an adapter bracket for the flight controller, but you don't need it because this is a newer version of the frame where it has the holes for the flight controller already. So, yeah, this is the Armaton Tadpole. Nice, solid build. It's pretty stiff. Uh, should be pretty durable uh, when it comes to flying. Last items for the frame, it also came with um, a lipo pad so pretty much is a foam sticker if you do want to put it on uh, pretty much just goes on the top plate here and it does avoid the screws and this can be something that your battery can stick to it also came with battery straps so again you could use that um, to secure your your battery to the top of the frame so battery mounts right on the top 
and you can use one or two of these straps to secure it. One is usually enough, but if you want to use two, um, you totally have space to do so. Kit also came with some landing pads. So these two foam pieces here, the ones that look like bones. And they suggest you can cut these so that you're left just with this piece. So there's two on each bone. And once you cut them, you just put it right in the middle of the arm over here. So for all four arms, because you have two of these. So one, two, three, and four. And that'll be your landing gear that protects your bottom plate. Um, also be sure, like right now I mocked up just two screws per motor, but uh, go ahead and use all four. That way your motor is nice and secure. From the motor kit, it came with different length screws. Make sure you use the shortest ones. So this looks to be two millimeters. So M2, two millimeters. And go ahead and secure all of your motors so that each one has four screws. There should be enough and a little bit of spares just in case you lose any. But there you have it. This is the Aero Season 4 spec build, the Armaton Tadpole. Um, go ahead and clean up you know, your wiring and positioning. Uh, but for the most part, this is the build. Uh, we provided documentation in the curriculum about how to program uh, Betaflight and also how to bind your controller um, to your radio receiver. If you have any questions, just contact either Tyler or Ephraim from the Aero team and we can assist. Uh, we can jump on a call or Zoom and help out uh, with the build if you run into any issues. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Mahalo.